This has been a long building series of events that President Putin initiated months ago, and he had, up until last night, taken a number of incremental steps uh, to include massing over 150,000, if not more, troops around Ukraine's border. So this was happening in real time. This was not a surprise. Uh, the U.S. appears to have collected a, a really high degree of intelligence about Russian activities and intentions. So uh, the thing that we now have to um, deal with is how long will this campaign last inside Ukraine, if not uh, elsewhere in the region? And nobody knows what those next steps will look like. This is one of the most difficult things with trying to ascertain President Putin's intentions. He's incredibly inscrutable and he's a trained intelligence officer. So those two things in and of itself make it very difficult to understand what his true intentions and, and goals and objectives are. One of them may have been to put enough pressure on Ukraine prior to, to last night anyways, to basically ensure that they would not under any circumstances join NATO or, or tilt even more to the West. If that was an objective, that, that didn't work up until yesterday. So now he's crossed another red line and another uh, threshold. And in in a way, he's sort of backed Russia into a, a corner now that he's going to have to figure out a way to get out of. Uh, Russia already attacked uh, Ukrainian power uh, targets relatively for relatively short amounts of time, uh, hours, if not days, I think in 2016, and then power and energy was restored. But I think they were demonstrating capability. They also wanted to see how the Ukrainians in the West would respond. But now that they've initiated a full-blown military invasion, one would think that these more aggressive cyber operations against Ukrainian critical infrastructure are definitely part of that mix and will be integrated going forward. And again, these are all policy levers that Putin could probably pull depending on where the campaign goes or how much pressure is being applied against Russia. That Russia's invasion of Ukraine could absolutely unify NATO in perhaps a way that it has not been before. And that could include an even higher level of military support to the Ukrainian military or resistance elements, but it probably will not involve NATO combat troops. One of the trade-offs for Russia's military occupation is that the longer the troops, their troops stay on the ground, that gives the United States and NATO and the West more opportunity to provide all types of different aid to the Ukrainian military uh, and resistance elements. And that aid could be channeled through uh, a military um, perspective, but it could also come from an intelligence one. And so there's no one single pipeline for that and makes it more multi-dimensional. And that is um, how the Soviets got bogged down in Afghanistan in the 1980s.